Hi, everyone. I want to talk to you today about what should your schedule be for you to take 150 listings in a year, in a 12-month period. Now, when I say take 150 listings, I did that in my real estate career. I did that for several years. And actually, I was working about 150 days a year. It was one listing taken every day that I worked. And I wanna share with you how I did that, what my daily schedule was. And before I start telling you about the schedule to take 150 listings, the one that I followed, I wanna say this, if you are a new agent or a newer agent, the schedule that I'm gonna share with you right now will not work for you. Because when I started, when I was brand new to real estate, the schedule that got me to take 150 listings a year did not get me 150 listings a year in the beginning. Obviously, I had a different schedule. And what, I'm, what I really want to say to you, and I want you to keep this in mind, your business is going to evolve, improve your skills, your way of thinking, the actions you take, the results that you produce. They will evolve, they will improve every single day if you are committed to learning and growing. Otherwise, you are living the definition of insanity. If you're just doing the same thing every single day, you're not getting the results that you desire to get. And you keep doing the same thing day after day after day, nothing will change. When I first got into real estate, I worked nights and weekends only because that was the only time I was available to work in real estate. And working nights and weekends during the day when I had a break, right? I was a stay-at-home mom at the time and I had lots of responsibilities as a stay-at-home mom. When I had breaks during the day, I would read a few pages of a great book, an inspiring motivational book. Any time that I could possibly be listening to any educational, motivational material, I'd be doing that. I used to do a lot of practicing scripts. I was just obsessed with internalizing the scripts, just being able to not have to read the script when I'm talking to people because that sounds scripted and sounds terrible and the results are not that great. So I spent many, well, I did that my entire real estate career, the schedule actually changed, but I did a lot more chanting scripts out loud, which is a great technique for you to internalize the scripts in the first year of my real estate career than I did four years later when I already I owned the script, so I wasn't chanting the scripts anymore. I was doing different things to work on how I was delivering the script. So I sounded more conversational, working on developing listening skills. So the practice that you're gonna focus on when you're brand new or two years, three years, four years into real estate. And of course, your production is improving, the number of listings taken is improving every year. That's gonna change. Mindset, meaning working on what is going on in your head, the thoughts that you are focused on and how to control that and different techniques and listening to, to material and reading great books that are going to help you control what's going on in your head. That's a constant. That's not going to change. It doesn't matter if you're brand new to real estate or you've been in real estate for 20 or 30 years. If you want to continue to improve your business, and when I say improve your business, it doesn't necessarily mean take more listings and sell more homes, but for most people, that, that would be a great thing to do. Improving your business, let's say if you're a veteran, you've been in real estate for 20 years and you're doing a great amount of business, perhaps your goal is not to sell more homes, it should just maintain your production and do it in less time. Regardless of what it is that you're looking to do, 
to improve. Mindset is a constant. You're never going to be done reading motivational, inspirational, powerful books, listening to motivational, educational, inspirational material. Never. That's if you want to have a great life, you're going to be improving your mindset, life and business, always, every single day. So let's get to it. Um, what was my schedule during the years that I was taking 150 listings a year? I woke up at 5 a.m. I spent 30 minutes in the morning right away. I jumped out of bed. Um, no coffee, no breakfast is just the way that I work. And I'm, hey, listen, as I give you this schedule, it doesn't mean that you're going to do exactly the same thing. I understand certain things that worked for me very well may not work for you. It probably won't work for everybody. For me, it worked. So just right out of bed, 30 minutes, I had a threat. Treadmill, treadmill in my home. So I spent 30 minutes doing some physical exercise. And while I was on my treadmill, I read and visualized my affirmations. And I only had a few affirmations. I would say no more than 10. Five is a great number. I probably on average had eight affirmations. So while I am on the treadmill, I am reading them. I used to handwrite them on a regular basis, write and handwrite my affirmations. And it was in an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that was taped to my treadmill. I would read my affirmations and visualize them. I would actually hold on to that treadmill and close my eyes and in very much detail, I would visualize every single one of my affirmations. I'm going to share one of them with you that uh, I became literally obsessed with. And that affirmation was, I take four well-priced listings per week. That was my goal, four well-priced listings every week. And when I say I visualized in detail, I'm talking about every single each one of the four listings I took, I would see myself walking out of a listing appointment with a signed listing agreement. I'd visualize it on my board, which I did have in my home office, writing the name and the address and the price of the property four different times. I would visualize my listings with my name on the office, they had a huge board in the office and every month they would write down all the listings taken and the last name of the agent right on the left hand corner before they put all the information and I visualized Kravitz, 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 walking by and seeing my name four times in a row every single week. I actually entered my listings in the multiple listing service and the MLS that I, that I, the way that it was designed at the time, you put in all the information of this new listing, and then I would press a key on my computer, which would actually enter it in the MLS, and then the MLS number would pop up, and I would handwrite it in the listing agreement that would be turned it into the office. I would visualize every step of the way, clicking that button, seeing the MLS number pop up writing it down four different times. And this is what I mean by detail. I am currently rereading the book, Think and Grow Rich. And the author talks about this in how to visualize, how to create this plan and write it down and actually read it out loud to yourself, the visualization part of it in detail because this is being absorbed and ingrained into your subconscious mind. I have to say, I honestly believe that my morning routine, which was based on mindset for at least an hour, 
actually what I'm referring to you here, I didn't even consider, of course, it's mindset. I was on the treadmill and I was multitasking. I was doing my affirmations and visualizations at the same time. And then I had another hour of a mindset routine, which I'm going to share with you. This piece of my day, first thing in the morning, is the most important thing I did every single day. If I just jumped out of bed at 7.30 and got on the phone to prospect by 8 o'clock without doing any mental preparation, without working on my skills, which I did every morning too, I, I have no doubt in my mind that I would not have been able to have the business that I have. So what's interesting about this, as I am sharing with you my routine for my visualizations every morning, I recognize that this is, this is what most agents that are actually prospecting every day and not getting results, this is what is lacking. Because you might be listening to this right now and say, well, you know, I'm just going to get to work. Yeah, I, I want to prospect and, and I'll do a role play and just jump on the phone and I'm not getting results. Why not? This is why. It, it has been said that a huge percentage of your success is determined by your mindset. Mindset is a habitual mental pattern that determines how you interpret and respond to situations. In essence is what's going on in your head. What are you thinking about? What are you focused on? That's your mindset. Some people say mindset is 80% of success. Some say it's 90%. I say it's everything. It's everything. To me personally, it's 100%. Well, but isn't taking action very important too? Listen, you're not going to take action if your mind is not in the right place, if you're having negative thoughts, if you're continuously doubting what you're doing, if you're in fear, you're not going to take action. At least you're not going to do it consistently. You may do it one day or two days. You're not going to be able to maintain the consistency to produce great results on a regular basis. It's not going to happen. And on the other side of this, when you have a strong, powerful mindset, when you work on feeding your mind, I, I actually use the term bombarding your brain with powerful, positive, motivation, inspirational ideas 24 seven, of course you're gonna take action. You're the, feeding your mind, your goals and your desires and reading great books, it's going to inspire you. You're not going to be able to not take action. You're just, of course, you're going to take action. And the actions you take are going to produce much better results than if you're continuously focused on negative stuff. So do not underestimate the importance of this portion of my schedule right here that I'm sharing with you right now. Affirmations, visualizations. I did it on my treadmill. I was multitasking. I had a lot of things to take care of in the morning. You might be able to just do it without the physical exercise. I don't know. You got to figure it out, but you cannot not do that and expect great results. Now, right after my 30 minutes on the treadmill, I took a shower and then I'm having my coffee. And while I'm having my coffee, I'm sitting at my dining room table and I have a mindset routine. I would read 10, 15 minutes of a motivational, inspirational, educational book. I mentioned Think and Grow Rich a couple of minutes ago because I'm rereading it now. Books like that. There's so many incredible books just like Think and Grow Rich. I would sit and read for 10, 15 minutes. I would read through quickly my goals every single morning, my goals, my goal for the year. I had a business plan. I wouldn't sit and spend half an hour. I would obviously, your business plan, first of all, is a document that you need to be looking at it all the time. And it cannot be something so complicated that you don't even understand it. Keep it simple. I would 
look at it every day. I will just like have visual contact with my goals. My part of this business plan included my daily schedule. So I would take a few minutes and go through that. Then I would read my personal goals. Like, okay, I am following this schedule and I'm following this business plan that's going to get me, let's say, 100 closed transactions a year, whatever the annual goal may be. I'm going to earn a certain amount of money. That's all part of the business plan. And why is that important to me? What am I going to do with this money? So those are my personal goals, not just what I'm going to do with the money, the person I'm going to become, the things that I want to achieve, what I want to do. So I would read through those probably another couple of minutes. Obviously, when you're doing this every day, I'm not reading. So I learn what it is. I'm looking at it every day, every day, every day. So I can stay inspired. Then I had several pages of motivational quotes and powerful thoughts that I wanted to remind myself of every day. It's so easy to, by default, to focus on negative stuff. I know for myself that back then and still today, I have a different career. <laughs> I am a real estate coach and I spend the same amount of time every single day reading and rereading my plan, my goals, powerful thoughts, motivational ideas, motivational quotes. I do that on a regular basis. So I had probably three or four pages of that. I look through that every single day. I also listened to not only for a few minutes in the morning, but really throughout the day, um, most of the time in my car, I never was listening to like music. It was always Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, uh, a lot of live role plays, stuff that I wanted to learn. That that's I became obsessed. So to me, it wasn't an effort. It was just exciting to actually be working on my mindset and my skills. So that was about 45 minutes to an hour. And around, I, I started calling expireds at 8 a.m. Now, don't do what I'm doing. Go talk to your broker. Go check the rules and regulations of your state. I called expireds at 8 a.m. So for a few minutes, probably 15 minutes before calling expireds, I would chant my scripts. Now, when I was taking 150 listings a year, I owned the script, but this is like warming up, reading the basic for sale by owner and expired script, because after FISB, uh, expired, they'd be calling for sale by owners, reading through some of the most common objections for sale by owners and expired. That's where all my listings came from. They give us a lot of objections and the objections are always the same. There are probably a handful you're going to hear every day from almost every expired and feasible that you talk to. I would read through those objections. I would read through a few closes. I'm warming up just as an athlete that's going to play a huge game. They don't just jump out of bed and walk into the court. They're warming up. They're practicing so that they can go out there and play at a high level. 8 a.m., I started making my calls. On most days, Tuesday through Friday, by 8.20, 8.30, I was done calling the new expireds for the day, except Mondays. Mondays, it would take me close to an hour because I had three days worth of expired listings. I had Friday, well, I had Saturday, Sunday, and Mondays expired. So it just take me longer to, to, to actually... Uh, dial all of those numbers. So on Mondays, I did not role play. Tuesday through Friday at 8.30, I had a scheduled role play partner. So for between 8.30 and 9, I'd be role playing. And 9 o'clock, I'd get back on the phone calling the newer or newer, newer for sale by owners. Let me say something about role playing. I actually didn't start role playing until I was already taking 100 listings a year. And the reason for that is I had a few role play partners my first and second year in real estate. 
And I personally decided that it was a waste of my time because I didn't feel like the role plays were actually helping me improve in any way. It was just reading the script and going through and the objections were easy and my role play partners were not very good at what they were doing. They didn't give me any constructive feedback. So it was a waste of my time. So I stopped that. And I spent some time actually practicing the scripts on my own, reading them a lot as fast as I could, working on my mindset. By the time I was taking 100 listings a year, a lot of great agents started sort of noticing what I was doing and they wanted to role play with me. Now I'm role playing with people that are really skilled, that I'm learning from. We're learning from each other. We're giving each other really great feedback. So I role played for 30 minutes. So think about that, okay? I'm talking about uh, use your time wisely. I encourage role play. I think it's a great thing for you to do. If you have committed role play partners, people that are committed to improving that are going to, you are going to help them and they're going to help you. Not to mention also that in the first couple of years, I had some role play partners that, you know, we scheduled the role play and these people never showed up. And, and I'm sitting there like I'm dialing. They don't answer the phone. It's like, uh, what is up with this? Right. It's a waste of my time. So at nine o'clock, I'd get on the phone to call for sale by owners. My goal every single day was to set one qualified listing appointment. And I did that. My goal was also 20 contacts a day. That's a secondary goal. Number one goal, set one qualified listing appointment every day. And at this point, I would say the new expireds that I called at 8 a.m., I probably made somewhere between five and eight contacts. And then the remainder were all for sale by owners. This is early 2000s, very hot market. A lot more for sale by owners than expired listings. And that showed in my business as well. I was listing about 100 FISBOs a year and 50 expired, just because there were more FISBOs than expired. So I'd stay on the phone for probably 1030, another hour and a half. Then I take a short break. 10, 15 minute break, I get back on the phone to do my lead follow up. And I didn't have any specific amount of time to follow up. I just made sure that I followed up on all the leads that I had set for me to follow up on that day and any leads from the last couple of days that I hadn't been able to get a hold of. And when it comes to lead follow up, I want you to remember that the only way that you're going to be able to convert your leads into appointments, which is the only goal for following up with anybody, is you got to be obsessed with following up. Obsessed. So yeah, I started doing my lead follow-up around 10.45, 11 a.m. I made a few calls. Anybody that I wasn't able to connect with at that or speak with, I should say at that time, I would actually keep that lead. I used to have my leads on uh, eight and that, no, not eight and a half, five by seven cards. Like they were about the size. I think they're five by seven cards. They were on paper. So I used to carry them with me for the rest of the day. I didn't have it on my phone. I didn't have it anywhere else. Like um, I had the paper that I could touch that I could feel, that I could carry with me, that I could take to listing appointments no matter where I went. And my goal was to, if I don't talk to them in the morning, I'm going to call them again as many times as I need to throughout the day, early afternoon, mid-afternoon, late afternoon, evening, until I speak with them. That's what being obsessed about following up looks like. Not just, oh, I call in the morning, they don't answer. Oh, okay, I'll try again in the morning. Uh, tomorrow, maybe they're never going to answer the phone in the morning. And if they see that you're calling five, six times a day, they pick up the phone just to, hey, what's up? You know, you've been calling me all day. Exactly, because I want to talk to you. So that was about it. I um, Around 1130 or so, I probably done calling my leads. I, at this point, when I was taking 150 listings a year, 
uh, I used to carry an active inventory of listings of maybe 35, 40 listings. And I always had some sellers that I needed to have conversations with about a price reduction. So that's when this would happen. Probably around 1130, whoever I need to speak with, I'd make those calls. Then I take a short lunch break. And the afternoon was for listing appointments. So if I had a listing appointment in the afternoon, I'd prepare my own CMA, got all the paperwork ready and off to a listing appointment or two or three. I had days of going on several listing appointments and some days when I didn't have any listing appointments in the afternoon. If you don't know, <laughs> I, I spent many years prospecting um, early evening, like 6 p.m., 5.30, 6 p.m. for an hour, hour and a half. My first couple of years in real estate, I did that. At, by my fourth year, I, it, it wasn't necessary for me to do that anymore because I was achieving my goal just making my calls in the morning. So if I had listing appointments to be on in the afternoon and evening, great. I went on them. If I don't have any, well, then I got the afternoon off. What a trick that is, right? But again, not in the beginning of my career. In the beginning of my real estate career for the first two years, even my third year, it wasn't until my fourth year that I really felt like I actually kind of sort of knew what I was doing and was starting to feel more confident. Even then I had doubts, I had fears, I had negative thinking, but way, way less. And my confidence was much, much higher, obviously. So I didn't need to be prospecting late afternoon, early evening, but the first couple of years, oh yeah, any day that I didn't have a listing appointment, there I would be. Late afternoon, early evening, and again, I'm talking about six o'clock or so, 6 p.m., is a great time to actually redial the expireds or for sale by owners that didn't pick up the phone earlier in the day because a lot of people tend to answer the phone at that time. Saturday mornings. I did a lot of Saturday morning prospecting the first two years of my career. At this point, my, by my fourth year from then on, I didn't because it wasn't necessary anymore. I was actually setting one qualified listing appointment every day and taking four listings a week consistently just by focusing on the schedule that I shared with you here today. I didn't, I didn't need to do anything else. And I say this to you because it's encouraging, yeah? In the beginning, you're gonna put in a lot of time. You're gonna put in a lot of work. And as you do, and your mindset and your skills strengthen and improve, the number of hours that you're putting in, in actual prospecting, will be less. I mean, my first, my first year in real estate, I was talking to 400 people a week, talking to contacts, actual conversations. By my fourth year, I'm talking to 100 people a week and taking a listing. <laughs> my first year, I was talking to 400 people a week and uh, not taking a listing a week, not even close. I sold 25 homes my first year, which was amazing for me. But you can see that as you consistently work on your mindset and your skills, you're improving every day, every day, and it's compounding and it's, it's accumulating all of those skills. And you're going to start improving your results on a daily basis. But at the end of a year, two or three years, or even six months, when you're consistent with doing what you're supposed to do every day, Wow, you're going to be blown away by the amazing results that you will produce. So that's it. That's about it. Afternoon for me was always listing appointments. Um, I told you earlier that I actually entered my listings in the MLS. So I go out, if I take a listing, two or three in a day, uh, amazing. I come back, I would put my listings in the MLS, maybe that same afternoon or evening if it was early enough. If not, I would do it the next day or as soon as I, I was able to. One thing that I wanna end with, and this is something that for me, it was non-negotiable and it needs to be non-negotiable for you from day one of your real estate career. My mornings, my mornings, they were sacred. This morning schedule 
my first couple of years, I said, I worked nights and weekends because I, I wasn't able to work in the morning. If I had, and many of you have, the ability to work full-time in real estate from day one, you have to get to develop the habit and the discipline to follow the morning schedule that I shared here with you today. You got to work on your mindset. You got to work on your skills and you have to prospect all of this before noon, nothing else before noon. I never let anything get in the way of what I did in the morning, starting my third year in real estate, because that's when I started working full time. And that's probably one of the most important things you'll do. A huge issue for real estate agents is procrastination. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm busy in the morning. I have to go to a home inspection or I have a closing or I got this going on. I will prospect later and later never comes. So don't let that happen to you. I trust that you got a lot of great ideas from being here today. And more importantly, that you're going to implement some of the things that you heard here today and have great results.